welcome to the mama's den. Mm. <laughs> this is Cody, mama of twins, Aristotle and Langston, who are four, and my six-year-old, Brooks. Guys? Oh, <laughs> hi, this is Ashley. I have four daughters, Amira, she's 14, Azara is six, Asi is five, and Tata is 16 months. Woo woo. Yay. Love it. This is Felicia. I have two kids. Peace is eight and Zen is four. This is Melanie. I have two kids, a son, Cameron, who is seven, and a daughter, Kaya, who is one. Hey. All oh, right, guys. Today. Kids. How many kids is that collectively? 11. Four to I've Damn. counted many times. <laughs> Damn. It's 11. Go right away. 11. We have 11 kids between That's us. That's a lot. I usually write that whenever I'm writing like a bio for us. I'm like, they have 11 kids between them. Oh, that sounds it's, like it's a, a lot. lot. It's a lot. It's, it's a always lot. weird when you say it you have like two kids, show. Melanie. Know, it is right? always weird when I say I have two kids because that was never, <laughs> it was <laughs> never supposed to be the words that came out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> However, <laughs> Ashley made that happen. You're welcome. Ashley definitely made sure I got pregnant. Anybody else want to get pregnant? And we got at the same time. That Beep. was crazy. I don't have no problem getting pregnant, girl. Oh. I said, do you want to get pregnant? <laughs> Not can you? <laughs> one time, one time. By the way, at some point, <laughs> by the at way, some point, some point, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if this needs to make the episode or not. But on the Mama's Den, when it's like, what is one thing you don't want for Mother's Day? I was the person that answered. I know. I saw to be it. Pregnant. I literally, I literally <laughs> almost brought that up right now. No more kids. <laughs> but you wrote no, no, no. It said one. It said something like, oh, there were two questions. What do you want for Mother's Day? And what don't you want? What for Mother's don't Day? you want for Mother's Day? So I thought you wrote for the do you want to be pregnant, but that you were joking. No, oh, I knew you were not, not going to. The be answer pregnant. is what I don't want. <laughs> Is to be pregnant. That's funny. Yeah, Bri, Bri and them did that. I hope they're going to do something with those answers. She asked me if I want another baby the other day. <sighs> oh, gosh. Who Gia, did? Can we finish the house? Shit. Yeah. Can we get a vasectomy? I'm getting pissed off at him. <laughs> I'm going to call my... I'm, I'm like, this is the first time I met a Gia. <laughs> I think he's really into me being pregnant. I'm starting to think it's like a weird fetish now at this point. <laughs> well, now, you got a house. now y'all got a house, so... It's the space for me. He's like, yeah, let's fill it up. One no, thing at a time. It's filled. We're done. He needs to get a vasectomy or I'm going to have to close up shop. Yeah, but there was a time when you were like, get a vasectomy or else. I and thought then, he did. And then you were like, fuck it. I know. I definitely wanted to fuck it. Um. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Cody. No, that, okay. <laughs> I just, didn't know if you had something to say no, about it. No, it just goes downhill Falling from there. off the wagon. <laughs> Trying um, to learn to stop on the while wagon. I'm ahead. <laughs> Whatever. Um, <laughs> questions. All right. So CC from Los Angeles, California hey, says- CC. I absolutely love listening to you ladies. I found you all before I was pregnant because of black love heart. <laughs> and I've been hooked ever since you make the motherhood journey. So real for me. I have two questions for all of you. I am excited to be bringing a baby girl, bringing in a baby girl during the summer. I'm a big fan of, I'm a, okay. <clears throat> Apologies. <laughs> I am so excited to be bringing in a baby girl during the summer. I'm big on family support and love. The only thing is both sides of our family, mine and her dad's are across the country. What is your best advice for managing while being cross country with your relatives? That's Go question ahead. number one. Go ahead, Mel. <laughs> well. That's a good one for you. Yeah, both of my both of my, my parents are in a different country and my in-laws are in across the country. Absolutely. Um, and the way that we make it work is we f have our families come in, they fly in or we fly them in if we need support, if there's something that we're doing. Um, for the most part though, it's really hard without family local. We just kind of figure it out. We have to be in tandem, um, you know, with our son, with our eldest, we didn't have like, it was, it was planned visits. And then by the time we had the second one, we had so much help. Like fortunately, both of my parents were retired, we would have them come. They stayed for three months after my daughter was first born. And I remember, I think I shared this on another episode. When we had our son, I was like, I don't want anybody coming to visit for the first two months. I just <laughs> want it to be us <laughs> as a family of three, finding our groove, <laughs> nesting. Ciao. Ciao. <laughs> My mom was there on day four. <laughs> Jared's mom was there on day seven and they stayed for two weeks at the time. When they left, I cried. So when I got pregnant the second time, baby, it was how long can you stay? And mm -hmm. can you stay beyond that date as well? Mm -hmm. So I would make it a point. I think it's a really important thing to prioritize the time, plan it where you can have your family be there, whether you're comfortable traveling, whatever that is, or having your family come to visit and stay. Um, it's really helpful. And also just the quality time is really, really, I think, important 
I think as we get older and as our parents get older, it is a gift for them to still be around. And so spending as much time as possible is, is I think the way I like to approach family time. So, and then obviously if it's not, you know, working that way, rely on, for help and support friends. Don't be afraid to ask your, lo- your friends that are local. And if you can't afford it, it's within your resources, look into childcare, somebody who can even come just twice a week to give you and hubby a break. And you guys can have date nights or just take a nap. I would say don't underestimate like what you might need from the standpoint of like, I was the same way. I really didn't want anyone there when we first had Brooks. Ultimately, my aunt came for all the kids, like for at least two weeks. As y'all know, our our mothers, Tommy and I, they're cute, but they're not that helpful. <laughs> um, my aunt is helpful. And so I say that like if she wasn't available, right, because she got her own kids, one of which is on her second baby. You know, what I know for sure and what I hear you saying, Melanie, is like, we do need the help. Mm. And that help come like is food, is somebody to wash dishes and to help like change diapers when mom can sleep, you know, and sometimes the husbands can do all that, but sometimes they can't. And so the reality that like, if you don't have a parent or somebody that can fly in, like really looking into childcare and just not, not saying like, I can do it all, which we often do. You can, you can, if you have to, but But if you don't have to (laughs) really think about what you can afford and put some things in place and you can always scale back. You can always say, Oh, you know what? We're good. And you can always take a nap. (laughs) <laughs> I vote nap always. I agree. I'm I'm the same as y'all. I feel like baby number one, I was overwhelmed because there was too much help. But once I had baby number two, I was like, no, this is not. There's no such thing as too, <laughs> too much, much help, help with these damn kids. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, ask for help in building a village, like you said, whether it's friends or yeah, like just building a community, I feel like is so mm-hmm. important, you know, even if it's somebody to come over and keep you company and you're talking to an adult and not staring at a child all day long. Mm-hmm. Listen, you know? I, I'm going to thank my friend over there, Ashley, sitting in the corner because I definitely had a meeting where I had nobody to watch Kaya <laughs> and I definitely dropped Kaya off with her fresh baby as well <laughs> to hang out in the midst of moving with no sleep. And she was like, bring her over. I will watch her for you while you go take this two hour meeting. And she sure did. Aww, and so I, I her. it is, it takes a lot, but you can ask, ask, yeah. don't be afraid to ask. Also, and if your friends say no, they say no. But fortunately, mine said yes. <laughs> <laughs> I always assume that everyone's heard of meal train. Like whenever, Whenever someone has a baby and they're like, what can I do for my friend? I'm like, do they have a meal train? And people are like, nah, what is that? But for anyone who doesn't know, a meal train, like you can set it up online. You can put in, mom and dad can put in their preferences of like what they like to eat, what they don't eat, what restaurants they like, what time of day they want to eat. And anyone can order them food to be delivered or bring food over during the windows that they've like pre-assigned. And it has a calendar. Do y'all know this? Y'all know yeah, that's, that's right. so I've heard of it, but I've yeah. never utilized it. Yeah, yeah it has a calendar. So you can say, I'm gonna take March 3rd. You know what I mean? Somebody else takes whatever ever date and you can see where there's no food so like I love that oh, if you tight. you know it's really dope yeah for yourself for your homies organize a meal train it's literally like mealtrain.com hmm. my homegirl did one for me we all remember when we all had COVID in my house me and Chia <laughs> both had it she set it up and that was the most amazing that wasn't even having a baby but people were literally buying us dinner like every day mm-hmm. and it was the most helpful thing because we were down bad mm-hmm. so all of that stuff all of your suggestions I feel because all I think all of us Except for you, Fee, um, none of our parents live here. Mm-hmm. So nope. yeah. we out here doing it. We out here doing it. Doing it. <laughs> Word. Second from Cece. How have you all been balancing being a woman who wears many hats? Mom slash business owner slash wife slash girlfriend slash career. Well, you know, my Capricorn twin, um, the mm-hmm. Miss Michelle, uh, Michelle Obama said, you know, you can have everything, but you just. Well, I always say too, like you get everything, you just don't have it all at once. And I really do feel like I've always been an advocate that there's no real balance in this world. It's truly like, I don't feel like anyone really is just has everything and they're just balancing it perfectly. I just think there's moments in your life where you're a really good mom, you're a really good employee, you're a really good friend. Mm -hmm. And there's just moments when you're just not. And I feel like my rule is day to day, like today what is the most pressing thing like do you have a deadline to meet for your job or do you have something you know then you might have to focus more on that your kids or your family takes a little bit of a a backseat to that and then the next day if that's done you're like okay I'm going to take my kids to the park and have some more one-on-one time with them and I'm not answering any emails today so I always try to tell people like let go of the balance and just really think of it day to day what's the most important pressing Mm -hmm. thing that I have to accomplish today and let that be your daily task because that's it aka Mm -hmm. 
how when you have many hats, pick one, mm-hmm. put it on, and decide that that's the hat you're wearing. Today. <laughs> mm-hmm. well, yep. it's, it, that's just it. Because there are many hats. And to your point, yeah. Ash, you got to decide what is the priority that day. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I mean, I don't know about y'all, but I don't know too many days where I'm like, oh, I was a great wife and, nope. <laughs> and employee. It's nope. like something fell to the wayside that day. Absolutely. I just don't even care anymore. <laughs> Agree. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Black Beyond Measure honors and elevates Black creators, artists, entrepreneurs, and others in the Black community. Target holds the community front and center, supporting their products, ambitions, and efforts, and people behind them, encouraging them to thrive. Booyah! And look, we know that the world is stressful. We know that motherhood is at least five jobs rolled into one title, plus the other jobs that you need to do. That's why it's important to find those little moments, to embrace the soft life, and find that inner glow. And that can look different for everyone, too. Maybe it's journaling, listening to your favorite song, or sitting outside in the garden and taking in the sunset. For me, it's taking five minutes in my car with my favorite cup of coffee and just being. It looks different every day, but those intentional moments of self-care allow me to show up every day for myself and for my family. And showing up is why we come here and do the podcast. Connecting with other mamas, aunties, and even grandmamas on their parenting journey has poured into all of us. We love how uplifting our Mama's Den community is and how you help feed our outer glow. Community support is everything, and Target understands what it means to invest, uplift, and celebrate community. Learn more at Target.com slash Black Beyond Measure. All right, so Mikaela, hold on, Mick. I yella. And I'm saying that because she put like the pronunciation. Mm-hmm. So Mikaela. Oh, okay. Mikaela. Not Mikaela. Not Mikaela. Mikaela. There's a big I in the middle. Mikaela. Okay. Mikaela. All right. In Cleveland, Ohio. Oh, what up, Ohio? Hey. Blah, blah, blah. So she says, <laughs> oh, is that what y'all do? Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so my fiance and I have been together for six, almost seven years. I have two children with two other men before him and one child with my fiance. So my parents have not always made him feel the most welcome. When they have an event at their house, he, you guys want to revisit that? Because I see fingers. And, yeah, I don't know. The yeah. math wasn't I, math. I, I, was, I was just trying to again. keep trying. I wanted she, to know how many kids. She, yeah, She's got three kids by three men. Oh, yeah. and the, so she has and the youngest. That's why I said three and three. Oh. She has one child with her fiance. Right? No, one it. child with her fiance yeah. and two with two men before that. Yeah. Oh, I thought, sorry. That's not where like I got two confused. Yeah, I thought she, I thought she only had yeah. two kids. I thought she had two kids with two different men. And if, so I was and, like, is it five or three? Yeah. I now, got is you. this important to the question? No. She well, included the information. <laughs> you all seem perplexed. So we went down to clarify. All right, Michaela. Make sure sis, you cut some of that clarification out, Crystal. She said, <laughs> When they have an event at their house, he will not come. It's so much tension. Please help me. What can I do? I have tried talking to all of them and both are stubborn. All of them, I think, being... Wait, who won't come? She said that her parents have not always made him feel welcome. And when they have an event at their house, her fiance will not come. And she's tried talking to all of them, her parents and the fiance, and everybody is stubborn. Well, you know my answer. These people are grown? No, I mean, I think that if... If, is she saying that the parent, her parents don't like her fiance? They don't make him feel welcome because he's just the third dude. To so them. then he just doesn't come around. So then, yes. So he doesn't feel welcome. Right. And I get that. I mean, I definitely was not welcome in Chia's family. And I still came anyway for the sake of my child. So I say to try to show up regardless, because also I think that you kind of allow people to dictate your relationship if you don't show up. Mm. So it's more so like, I'm going to be a little uncomfortable, but also it it sets a standard that we're a family and we're showing up here together and we're all in support of one another. So no matter how you feel about him, he's still going to keep coming and he's still going to keep showing up. So it's on y'all. If you don't show up, then it allows them to be like, cool, we can have her without you Mm because that's what they want anyway. Do you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? So I would say for her to more so have a conversation with her spouse to be like, we're a united front. And if this, you know, is they're engaged, like he wants to get married, then that's her family. And so they need to show up together regardless of how he feels about her family, making him feel, if that makes sense. And then him also just being understanding that whatever issues are probably more so her family's issues were her more so than they are him. If it's like a, he's the third guy, like that doesn't have anything to do with him. That's like a conversation she needs to have with her parents about them letting yes. go. I think mm-hmm. all of the I think all of the above is true. Okay. Yeah. Cuz I think Same. your approach sounds amazing and yeah. sounds like you I were have being a different answer. 
Oh. Yeah, you were being very kind. And, I'm surprised. And, well, that's what I did. Yeah, no, and I think it's really, it's very high vibrational. It's well, actually very mature. I'm, and it, I'm those things sometimes. Yes, it's very, it's very, <laughs> my, my answer was definitely going to be like, I'm going to nobody's house. <laughs> really? Yeah. And if this is somebody that I'm building my life with and, and the people that I love are not willing to be compassionate or Mm -hmm. remove their projections from previous experiences Mm -hmm. to put on this person that I'm choosing to spend my life with, then y'all ain't going to see us. Mm -hmm. That's, Mm -hmm. that's, you know, and I'm not saying maybe all the time, but most of the time, like, Hey, like I'm starting a new life. I've chosen this person. I'm Mm -hmm. building a life with this person. Yeah. And, um, this is my person. You know, I can say on both ends, being a child where my mom chose to do that with my grandmother initially when she didn't like my dad And then we don't remember it because I guess they made amends and it was all fine. But then we didn't have a relationship with my dad's family because they didn't care for my mom. So that sucks growing up, like Mm -hmm. not knowing who my aunts and uncles are and them Mm -hmm. living in the same city and having no relationship with them. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the reasons why I was like, no, we're I'm showing up in Mm -hmm. my. But then I stopped coming after COVID because the election and stuff and it was just very like divisive yeah and I was like yeah and I'm good so because my kids are old enough now to Mm -hmm. go over there without me with their father they could tell me if something happens now Amir is always like mommy why don't you come with us when we go to my grandmother's house Mm -hmm. and now it's weird and I'm like dang like when I was going she don't even remember that now (laughs) she's now she's asking me about when I'm not coming Mm -hmm. so I always say to show up together because I'm in such a space of like the door is closed and I hate that, but that's just my personality. Like it's always open. And then what, like I'll let you dibble dabble in and out 5,000 times. And then on 5,001, I'm like, it's forever closed. And so it's so hard for me to like go back and then that affects your kids. So I think that's the only reason why I'm always like, just, just go. You know what I mean? Because when you get to that space of like you're saying, this is our family, blah, blah, mm-hmm. it affects your children more than anyone else. Like you're good living your life, but your kids start to get disconnected from their family. So. I agree with that. You have to say, think about your kids more than anything. They're going to feed off your energy. Do you know what I mean? If you don't have a relationship yeah. with their family, they start to not have a relationship mm-hmm. with their family. Then they yeah. just grow up without no family. I kind of, <laughs> I kind of didn't like that growing up, like because my mom and dad weren't together and we would get dropped off when we were younger. We would get dropped off with my dad and my grandmother. But I only knew the family like here and there. My mom was never like, you know, would never be around. So growing up, I felt like I had to start these new relationships. And it's just weird. Yeah. Like, you know, so much time has passed. So mm-hmm. I definitely am a, like, we're going to show up and think about it from that perspective. Yeah, yeah, it out. But what about... <clears throat> the children witnessing the disrespect. That's what I was going to say. How deep is the disrespect? Yeah, how deep is it yeah. like, oh, they're just not I think talking? there's absolutely oh. not one answer. No, right? that's, why, that's why I'm saying like, yeah. I think it's important. Like there are many ways you can handle this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And obviously we don't know every detail. We don't know every person. We don't know yeah. every personality right. and dynamic and more to the stories, you know? Yeah. Um, but I agree. There's many ways you can handle yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you got to let the kids witness it and then stop coming. Because then it's easier to be like, this is not acceptable. Mm-hmm. We don't let people treat us this way. This mm-hmm. is harmful mm-hmm. versus them never seeing it. Then it's always stories. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? And people can manipulate the situation. So mm-hmm. I think that's, I mean, that's like low key sneaky, but it's also like, let people see why you don't show up. But also this going back to you for a second, like you mentioned that you would go and then eventually you stopped. And now Mira asks you about mm-hmm. it. She's at an age where you can articulate. I felt a certain kind of way being mm-hmm. there and how I was treated. And this is why I made this decision. Do you know what's so crazy about that? I always knew one day I'm going to tell her how they treated me. And seeing the relationship that she has with her grandparents, it makes me not want to say anything. Mm. You don't want to tarnish it at all? No, I don't. Because mm-hmm. they're like getting older. Mm-hmm. And it's so sad, but it's like, what is even the point? Right, mm-hmm. right. What's the point? What's the point? Yeah. Like she has such a, and they love her. Mm-hmm. They love her so much, which is what I wanted, yeah. which is why I showed up it's for her to have a separate relationship with them. Right. And so now my relationship with them doesn't even matter. Like, I don't care yeah. because that's why I don't come. So like, what do I don't you feel say good. when she asks you? I just told her that a lot of stuff has happened that didn't have anything to do with her. And I don't really feel comfortable going. And she's like, but we want you there. And like, I don't like 
like when you're not we're not together as a family and it feels weird when you don't come because they know that like they're not dumb like I don't not go anywhere do you know what I'm saying we do everything as a family you know we're very velcro um and she's like (laughs) so then it makes her feel weird a little bit like what you know what I mean I just feel like when she's older maybe when they're passed away then she can just look back like oh that's why that they did that but they're dead so who cares Recipes. I, I can't know. believe it. I can't or, believe it. You know, hopefully my TV show comes out one day and then they'll find out that way. I don't know. <laughs> I just want you to know Cody's got prayer hands up right now. Because <laughs> I'm unsure if I should use my follow-up question or just move on from this topic. No, I don't know. I don't know if my brother Chia going to uh, come for me. Um, uh, okay. Well, cool, 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 cool. So, Danny. <laughs> Danny in Los Angeles. Oh, yeah. Hey, Los Angeles. My name is Danny, and I am a bonus mama. I thoroughly enjoy listening to your podcast. My question is for Felicia. Girl, I knew it was going to come, bonus mama. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I knew it was coming. <laughs> My bonus son's mom and I do not have a relationship. I have tried in the past, but it has never worked. I can see and feel that it's awkward for him, um, our son, the son. She didn't say that. I'm trying to clarify. But I can see and feel that it's awkward for him when we're all together and not speaking. Actually, she could be talking about her ex. Anyway, but okay. <laughs> I have tried in the past, but it has never worked. I can see and feel that it's awkward for him when we are all together and not speaking. You've previously spoken about meeting your kid's father's significant other and you guys hitting it off. Do you have any tips on how I can try and make the relationship better? I would love for him to have a sense of normalcy when we see each other. I'm assuming that him is the the son. I love him as if he's my own child and I want him to see all of his parents happy. I feel like I had to be the one to come around and give permission because this person is new to the family that we already built, you know? And once I was ready and opened the gate, then I feel like she was ready, you know, but it definitely, I mean, it's so tricky because it's not easy. Like it's really, really difficult, you know, and it's uncomfortable, but you can't force anybody to do anything that, Mm -hmm. you know, you don't, you don't want to force a relationship either. Like I'm thankful that I took my time and did it on my time. I wasn't rude. You know, like if I, if I see her, we would say hello and we wouldn't, we would intentionally not make it awkward because we don't want our kids to feel that, you know, but it, it definitely takes a lot of like maturing and getting past like old relationship stuff. But I mean, do you feel like, for you, is it a because you're the mom? So I'm trying mm-hmm. to think for her. She's the Danny is she's the bonus, the bonus yeah. mom. They're married. She said right. Presume she didn't say that. Well, she said bonus mom. So I'm assuming they're married. Yeah. But like for you, was there a time like if he's dating someone, I don't want to get close to them or even try to build a relationship with them if I don't know it's serious. Like so, was that one of the things for you? Like I need to make sure that he's serious about this girl before I even build a relationship with her, have my kids be invested in her, or was it just your own personal? journey of like I'm not ready right now no because when I saw that they were getting more serious I'm the one who told him I was like Mm. I can see that you guys are getting more serious I think that it's time that I meet her okay because before you know if it was just like oh you know I have girlfriends and stuff then even knowing him he's not the type to introduce the kids to somebody you know that he's not serious about And then once I met her from there, I still wasn't like, it wasn't all of a sudden like, okay, we're about to be friends. Like, no, I needed like another year to like (laughs) digest, you know? And all, it really, what it was is just like, I literally needed time to digest what was going on. I had Mm. to release this idea of like, you know, me and him are no longer together. Or this idea of family that we thought was going to be, I had to release that. And it's not something, you Mm -hmm. know, that's easy to do. And sometimes people seeing that, um, like, like speaking of the mother, she probably hasn't accepted that yet, that mm. you are literally a new woman that has come into this new situation and is playing the role that she was once playing, you know? So yeah. just really, it, it's, I feel like it, it really takes but two people to like, you know, rise to it. Because I think also with her and I, um, we both kind of move towards one another like very slowly like we've never rushed anything you know like it took me what like two and a half years to be like we should go to yoga together like Mm -hmm. 
you know, um, even now, like this past Sunday, um, it was his dad's, um, anniversary when it was no his dad's birthday his dad passed and then all of us are at the park hanging out like you know and then her and I are kiki in about like you know turning up in college like so now there's more of like a friendship but it's it takes time how and many it, years has it been since wait how many years of what of you knowing her mm, like two years okay I think like almost yeah like of me knowing that she has been around but I didn't meet her two years ago yeah, I met her probably like maybe like a year ago. Yeah, he took we he took time before he started to bring her around. Got mm. it. Mm-hmm. But it's hard, girl. So basically, she is gonna have to wait till the lady ready. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, she can do nice gestures. I right, girl, I don't know. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's hard. All right, so we have a question from the gram. Oh, for Miss Melanie. Mm. This question is from uh, at. E-T-O-W-F-I-K. Her name's Iman, I think. Um, (laughs) If I'm reading this correctly. Uh, All right. Melanie, your description of your childhood relationship through the years with your mom is something I can relate to. My daughter is 18 months and she is spicy. And even if it is harder to raise her, I never want to put out her fire. I am healing my inner child by raising her in so many ways. As a mom now, I get why my mom was so hard on me. Young immigrant with her own trauma. I don't want that for my daughter. I want to protect her in parentheses, like any good mom, but also fuel her fire. I always joke that every word and emotion I suppressed growing up because I wasn't allowed to or was scared to express, I birthed into her. (laughs) She is exactly who I wish I was unapologetically. So thank you for making me feel seen. I am excited to hear about your journey with Kaya, longtime fan. That was really nice. I like that a lot. I I love that. Thank you for saying that because... I think it's, it is, it's, it's, um, it sounds like you're healing through, through all of it. And I think that's a beautiful thing about when we get our little mini versions of ourselves, we can see ourselves within there and, and take the best parts of what we know worked and, uh, reframe and unlearn certain things. And I just love that she's spicy. <laughs> Let her be spicy, but just tell her not to turn up on you. That's what I tell Kaya all the time. I'm like, you could be spicy. I love it, girl, but just don't turn up on me so hard. <laughs> Does hopefully, she listen? Hopefully she understands. Does she listen? Does she listen? That's a different story if she listens. <laughs> okay. Although, yet, episode. although yesterday she did, listen, she was tight. She saw her dad through the window and he was on a call and then like he didn't come over to say hi to her. So she got pissed and she ripped a leaf off of my plant. <laughs> Oh, Wait, no. well, yes. I remember you Girl. blocking her from it, ripping, yes, ripping and a leaf. she has not been messing with my plants, but she was standing by the window where he was and she just turned around and went, yay. She is so funny. She, listen, Girl. And, and I was tight because she ripped one of the oldest leaves oh. that was on. It was like the mature leaf. And I was like, oh, I was so upset. My sister-in-law was there and she was like, no, you don't do that to mommy's plant. And she's like, go give mommy a hug. And she came over to me and she just hugged me. And she re- like, I, I feel like she paused and she looked at my face and she realized, damn, I shouldn't have done that. Uh. And she did come over and give me a hug. So I'm like, maybe there is some breakthrough there, but <laughs> that's spicy. Going to tear something up first. <laughs> damn, like, go tear some of your daddy's up. You was mad at him. Girl, right. Me. He don't got nothing. I got the plants. I got all the accessible things. <laughs> Sarah. All but right. Thank you for that. Thank you so much, Iman. I wish you the best. All right. So Brittany in Memphis, Tennessee says come on destiny's twins <laughs> <laughs> oh, that episode. shout out to melanie and cody for holding it down but i'm dying to know if you all have figured out the summer situation and what the other ladies have planned for the summer me too girl because we have not talked about it <laughs> um, because i'm also panicking about what i'm going to do with my seven and four year old for three months Oof. have mm. your children mentioned what their favorite camp is should i ship them off to a specific camp no, they too young. Don't ship them. Girl. Don't ship them off. Yeah, I'm not That's my personal anybody. vote. Don't ship them off. Mm-mm. But definitely put them in something. Put them in something. Get them out the house. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Even if it's somebody else's house. Yeah. You, Find a friend. Look, yeah. we've, we've talked about this before. Wait, were you done with the question? Yeah, that's okay. the question. <laughs> um, What's sorry. y'all doing? We've talked about this before. I am a summer camp gal. Yes. Okay. My mom gal. is a summer camp. Gal. Was a summer camp. She, we were not at home. And my mom, she was a single mom of three kids. So she had us in all the free programs. She's very like, use your resources. <laughs> all the free programs. Like I used to be like, Lori. <laughs> um, but I'm, I, I put those kids in camps. So are you someone that does this like in January? Like you got it, you got it locked in? 
I don't do it in January, but I definitely do it in advance because I don't want to, I made the mistake one time of not doing it in advance. And I was like scrambling and I was like, I will never do How that again. How far in advance? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I am a Silver Lake mom and those Silver Lake moms are on top of it. They're like, <laughs> registration starts in one week. So they actually hold me accountable. Um... February. <laughs> Jesus. Wow. Not no. her saying, not January, but February. Uh, February. February. Of wow. Yeah, it's early, y'all. And then their dad looks at me and he's like, why is this so early? I'm like, sir, do you, do you want them to be at your house five <laughs> right. days a week all of a sudden? I don't have patience like Ashley. All of a sudden. Sheesh. Do I have patience? Well, just you, living you in have to. actually my mom does have my mom said I have patience huh yeah you do I have she patience said that. never mind and so do yeah. you now Your mom she also too. needs vacations okay <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah I'm a summer camp gal but no I have not figured it out I think we've decided that Cam's gonna go for the summer league of the basketball league he's playing in currently right now it's ending next week so he'll go back for that and then looking into the camps that are there, this, the um, Parks and Rec at our neighborhood sent us a book that's been sitting on our counter for <laughs> definitely over a month, which we probably you should definitely should take a look at. Look. I have looked at it, a but have resource. I pulled any executions on where to go? No, but that that's actually also really helpful too. Is just what's local. And at this point, seeing as how some people have registered since February, <laughs> Cam might be in a knitting class. I don't know. Not, knit, not a knitting. She's like, that's all they had left. That's all they had left, bro. But you're going somewhere. You're going somewhere. We'll figure oh, it make out. Make me a sweater. Ooh, that's funny. You know what? I should do. I don't even know why I'm signing myself up for this. Then don't. But I feel like I'm just going to put this out into the universe. I have to have enough. Ooh, a mindful fee summer camp? Yes. yes. Oh, that'd be fire. Yes. Definitely. I really feel like I should start a mindful fee summer camp. Yes. Because it's very similar to our event, Mama and Me Art Therapy. Uh -huh. It feels like summertime. There's ice cream, there's music, Ooh. there's food, Ooh. there's champagne, yes. there's tie dye. Yeah, I'm like, so sad I missed that. I want to go to this camp. Y'all, this, this day was camp. Okay, let's be really clear because this was what? Early May. Okay. Yeah. So next time Ashley decides to drop out of an event, give me a call first I'm before sorry. Felicia posts the Instagram. I got sorry. one empty spot. Sorry. I was just trying to be thoughtful of her and her yeah, time, yeah. and next I knew it sold out in like in. five seconds. So I was like, let me tell Put this me girl in, she has someone who's begging her for a spot. Like I, because I knew I was gonna be able to come. I'm like, I'm not gonna call her Sunday. That's so rude. So sorry. Yeah, but you know, call me and then I can call her. Back. We ain't even like, hey, tell her. Somebody fill your I'll spot. I'll just show okay. up. Yeah, sorry. Say this is Zara. I think that we should. I think we. We, I'm signing y'all up. No, oh, let's I do think it. I thought that would be a good idea. Yeah, I love mm, that. Yeah. I used to go into schools and do like the with my book, a beautiful me art program, and it was so dope. And it was about like inclusion and self love, and oh, that was my favorite thing that I ever did. And I did it at a couple schools when I first moved here. But working with other people's kids is not my favorite thing to do. That's all right. We bring those people in, uh, yeah. girl. Yeah. Right. Oh, what well, we could create it. The mamas did summer camp. I'm gonna ask. Um, I feel the, like the mamas did summer camp is for moms. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You said champagne, right? Oh, yeah. I'm going to ask uh, the kids as in, I mean, the kids, the teachers as in school. Y'all working this summer? Come work at my camp. I know. Shoot. That'd I be guess Sharice good. knows some people. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sharice right. is some people. She is. She's yeah. one people. She's, She's one, she people one people. She definitely took care of her six and my, I don't know how many I Damn. gave her at the time, but three during the pandemic. I don't know if I gave her all three, but I might she have one of your I friends' kids, too. She has Zay, Zay too. Yeah. Yeah. It's going mm -hmm. down. Well, my so kids are going to be at home. I got to find a camp or something. I'm well, figuring it out. I got anxiety one night in in early May as well uh, and was spent three hours like looking up summer camps, mm. summer camp, summer program, summer everything. I also uh, that night I put Brooks to bed and we were talking about I was like, what do you want to do? And mm -hmm. so he started just telling me stuff. And 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 as I've mentioned, Melanie, on the Destiny's Twins episode, <laughs> um, he just started soccer um, and so I have a soccer camp for him. I have a cooking camp that he's not officially signed up for, but he's doing some cooking drop-ins. Oh, I need um, to, that information. It's down the street, Century City. Oh, yeah. I'm very excited about it. Um, so he's going to do some cooking drop-ins. He's doing summer camp. He's doing like traditional camps. Yeah. And then um, he might do this robotics thing. UCLA has some good programs. Oh, mm. let me look into that. Yeah, mm. I started to send you all of them, but I'm like, I think Ashley just wants her kids up under her all year. No, so no. I... Cody. I don't I <laughs> believe it or not it's just part of a lack of uh, poor planning and then I just make the best of my situations if that okay, makes then sense I'll, I'll literally send you every Please single send me thing no I want them I to go to camp you. you would let them go I actually was looking was at too. the school like, that Blair's kids go to yeah. to possibly send 
uh, the middles next year. Do it. When she told me they go to a private school and it's close to my house and she told me how much it costs. And that school is bomb, girl. That's what she told me. That school is bomb. I was like, oh, I think the middles might be going to Yay. a private school that's next nice. year. They be teaching them about their history. Yes, you. that's what she you was kids telling be reading. me. Cairo, my niece reads. She's only, what, that's five, what she, six? She, when she's I reading saw, like second, like a second, third grade. When grader. I saw the math she was doing, I was girl. like, she's in kindergarten? Girl. And she was like, yeah, because that's why I was one of my concerns is like homeschooling and your kids can be, you know, it's easier to help them move forward or be more advanced. Like, um, Asia is supposed to be going to kindergarten next year, but she's going to first grade. She's skipping because she's already doing first grade work now. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, oh yeah. She's like, no, they can definitely do that. I'm like, yeah, okay, bet. I love when you post her and her schooling. She's it's so, I'm I love like, my this kids. is, she's so cute. They're so much smarter than I was at their age. Lord God. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm excited that we all have like plans mm-hmm. in the works uh, and potentially our own summer camp, <laughs> at least for moms. We'll have champagne camp. Um, all right. Well, thank you all so much for the questions and for connecting with us. We love our village of mamas and non mamas who love the mama's den. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, make sure you're leaving us those five star reviews. OK. <laughs> and write out reviews as well. If you want to submit a question, you can connect with us on Instagram at the mama's den podcast or fill out our form in the show notes or send us an email at podcasts with With an an s S. (laughs) podcasts at blacklove.com and we will get your question in a future episode all right that's the mama's den 